Good afternoon, my fellow scientists. It is Friday, August 25th, 2017, and I want to talk to you all about laser safety. Now, I bring this up because one, I saw an awesome blog post about laser safety. Two, there are a lot of commercial products out there that are horrifically unsafe. And three, I now have a safe laser cutter, and it has reminded me of just how terrible the K40 type laser cutters are. So let's go through that one by one. The blog is awesome. It is entitled Laser Products I Hate or something like that. Link in the description. And basically the author, a laser safety specialist, a radiation specialist in general, goes through all of the horrifically unsafe products that he will throw away if he catches you using them, which I find really hilarious. Uh, he calls out wicked lasers in particular. They've been called out before because they made products that looked suspiciously like lightsabers, despite not having a endorsement by Lucasfilm. Got into a little bit of trouble there. And then now they're getting into trouble for having extremely high-powered lasers that are <laughs> essentially, as this author puts it, Geneva Convention forbidden blinding weapons. So yeah, no good. Uh, if you're working in a lab and you need to do laser spectroscopy and you buy what are now remarkably inexpensive lasers for that purpose, I guess that's one thing. But just, let's just get a, a 100 milliwatt laser for fooling around with, that's not a great plan. It takes a surprisingly no, low number of milliwatts to blind someone. The second issue, we now have a laser cutter in my lab that is reasonably safe. It has its own interlocks that and a fully enclosed shell so that laser light doesn't get out and if the enclosure is opened it shuts the laser down uh, immediately so that's great which brings up the third issue of the k40 laser cutter you can get these for 300 bucks 400 bucks on ebay they're imported from china they do work i bought one myself for use in the lab under very controlled settings and i have been working with lasers and safely for 15 years and if you're using goggles and you have good ventilation and you're very careful with mm, the fact that there is no safety interlock on a k40 laser then you can probably not hurt yourself but in and of itself this thing is not compliant with any laser safety laws and is basically not safe so K40s use at your own risk, but they do they do work. So if you're willing to uh, put on your laser goggles and monitor yourself for safety, uh, no, don't buy one. Seriously, just it's a terrible idea. Uh, they they also don't have the best ventilation systems. And last year there was somebody who managed to use one in an enclosed space and poison themselves and die. I guess there's a Kickstarter going right now that's raised about a million dollars to build a laser engraver for pancakes it's it's not wise it it's just not a great plan they're not a safe appliance and the at least at least if you buy one from boss laser which is where i got mine they've got a safety interlock and a really powerful blower and you can get a, a carbon filter to help remove the nasty fumes that come off of most plastics when you cut them so there you go laser safety don't buy a k40 Make sure you get some goggles. Think carefully before you order any lasers that have more than 5 milliwatts of power. It's probably not a great idea. Link to that great article in the description. If you like this sort of thing, like, subscribe, and tune in Monday through Friday. We talk about lasers and science and all kinds of fun stuff here in the Allen Lab.